there are two cash assistance programs. Um, a person actually it's on a family base, that means a family unit can be enrolled in a one or another program. One lasts three months. It's usually a little bit more money given because it's early employment program. Um, other program is seven months, pretty specific by the size of the family. And um, in some cases, in most of the cases actually right now, because this Wilson Fish program has not changed for the last 17 years, did not take in consideration any um, cost of living increase. That means we are still working with the money um, that we had 17 years ago. And if you know, we see a uh, housing market is very how the prices of apartments are raising and we have a very hard time actually getting in um, speed with providing housing with the money that clients receive. In order to receive this cash assistance, clients have to go to English class every day. Um, they have to have job classes. There is active job search and the first suitable job has to be accepted. And first suitable job by definition of the Department um, of State and Office for Refugee Resettlement is every job that pays you um, equal federal minimum or more, that means $7.25, that is not harmful for your body or your mind and does not um, takes you more than two hours to go to work and come back home. And uh, usually our clients, they don't have transportation, um, bikes a main mean of transportation, and we um, also in Boise have a public transportation that does not run all the time um, and does not cover the whole town. We work very hard with um, Valley Ride Transit to actually find uh, mini events to take people to jobs at the places where bus does not run. And also we provide bicycles to our clients, regardless of summer or winter. Um, that's the mean of transportation until they start working and save enough money that they are able to buy a car. As I said, every refugee comes with trauma um, is just moving from the place where you born and lived and never, I know, I never thought that I will end up in Boise, Idaho. Um, I never want to leave Sarajevo, but I have to. And um, it's just trying to make a plan with every family to be able to actually address the trauma but also find the strength and work with the family to move them to become um, economically self-sufficient. As I said, that's the main goal of the program. Sometimes people um, deal with their individual trauma, sometimes they deal actually with a whole family trauma there is a historical trauma, um, we saw actually that with um, Iraqis because after the war in 1991 and 2, um, some of the families that they uh, struck that, that war, then the, um, after 2003, it was just, I think, um, flashback of everything and people were just lost. As you know, um, bodies respond to trauma is a flight or fight or clink and or freeze. I know at the end, before I left Sarajevo, I could not stand bombing anymore. I would actually freeze on the middle of the street because I could not um, listen, that, that sound is just, uh, and that's what we deal with. That means when client comes, if there is any problem, they are already in that heightened state. 
And for us, in order to be able even to start working on any problem, we actually need to de-escalate and bring the person to a normal state to be able actually to work on the problems. All our services try actually to um, provide trauma-informed services. We try to make our offices, um, they don't have anything, any sounds, anything what would um, trigger the clients to actually go back to that traumatic event. Um, it's constantly trying to respect and treat everybody with respect and dignity is just in the last year that's been very challenging because people are constantly in fear that something will happen to them. Another big uh, moment of working with refugees is actually working with interpreters. And in a perfect world, we would have interpreters that they are trained, they are not um, traumatized by themselves and everything, but that does not work sometimes, especially in a mental health settings. Actually, um, interpreters also have like another trauma added to their trauma because they had to, they had the same experience. Um, problems with interpreters, as you never know, what information and what message was given to a client um, and how much the client understood. Um, we try to work with interpreters. Uh, we recognize that sometimes they are actually cultural brokers. Um, the ones that they are very well trained, they are actually very good and very well paid as they deserve, but the refugee agencies that they are funded by the um, number of refugees arriving through the agency usually are not able to pay them enough. And we struggle constantly with interpreters. We never try to use kids as interpreters. That's a big no-no because especially in the cases where we um, take families to address the school issues and things, using kids as interpreters is actually not sure what as a parent you get and what kind of message you get. <laughs> yeah, these are challenges and contributions. Um, a language barriers, as you can hear by my accent still. <laughs> um, they are very different cultural norms. Sometimes um, our clients it takes a month working with them to actually recognize that they need to have a good eye contact, that they need to shake the hand. They, those are norms of this society that they have to accept in order to go and look for a work or go through the interview process. Um, but also they are great uh, contributions. Most of uh, Refugees and immigrants, they start small businesses, they actually help the economy, they bring diversity and um, just bring the world in a small community in in region more. This is my final thought. Refugees who made this far are incredible strong people. That means they don't need pity. They just want friendship, they want understanding, compassion, and they want to become a part of the community.